So, as you're aware, looking at the clock and looking at the date, it is the end of October. It's way past the end of October. It's now towards the middle of November. How quickly the month does go by. But I have to do a little wrap up and conclusion about my time doing Sober October this year, 2022. As per usual, I do Sober October on the back of what those guys on the Joe Rogan podcast do, mainly Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura and Ari Shafir. It's something I never really knew existed prior to them doing it. I'm not too sure if it did exist or it was popular before they started doing it, but it is an opportunity for myself being an addict of nightlife, being an addict of going outside and dancing and partying and having sometimes too much of a good time to actually get things back to normal, reset and actually have an opportunity to to get my life into some level of balance and to make me understand the things I should be prioritizing on and the things I should not be prioritizing on. And this year was probably um, the most welcome to October I've had in a while because I think when I did it for the first few times they did it before, which might have been like 2019, 2018, I think might have been the first time they did it. It was the first time I did it um, in October. I used to do a lot more outside of partying that would basically alleviate any of the partying I was doing. So I was running a bunch, I was working out a bunch, I was reading a bunch, I was learning languages, like I was on my ting back then. So when it went to partying, I definitely did see partying or was going out or having a good time. I saw that as like the release. I spent my Monday to Friday toiling in the fields and then when it comes to Saturday or Friday evening I get my chance to hang out with the lads have a bit of a drink have a bit of a boogie and get a little bit crazy but as the years progress and primarily and I shouldn't do this because I'm not that kind of guy usually but I have to attribute some blame maybe one percent blame to the pandemic as soon as those gyms closed and I had no reason or no um excuse to go to one and I wasn't allowed to go outside quote unquote I really did accept it lock stock and barrel I think I probably was too accepting of it and maybe kind of you know fell into line too quickly but when it comes to having the ability to not work out and not go outside having the gym taken away from us and especially the ability to go outside because if you remember in the early parts of the pandemic lots of governments were telling their citizens hey you cannot go outside you can't even meet your friends for a sandwich or grab a coffee in my area where I'm at there were police officers patrolling the streets and squad cars and stuff and stopping anybody that was loitering around the place you had to be pretending you were jogging or have like a cup in your hand like it was crazy that, that sort of time so for whatever reason I decided to swallow that whole thing I never really challenged or questioned it I kind of played along like a good little boy and effectively they ended up hurting me because then when it came to working out again or when it came to indulging in all my vices I ended up doing it especially during that time when I was out of work and whatnot I wanted an ability to just black out and forget about my day forget about the fact that I was unemployed forget about the fact that my prospects didn't look too great and I just wanted to kind of you know not remember and basically not be present and what's the best way of doing that what's the best way of dealing with an actual issue that you're you know trying to put off drinking and doing drugs of course so I did that and it kind of really did help me especially during the pandemic luckily I was able to kind of pull myself into some level of order before the sober October thing started so it wasn't like I was going into it super green it was like I was going into it from a really really bad point I had some level of um you know well-behaved stuff that I was doing prior to that so it didn't get too crazy but still it was a bit of a nutty time for me so the sober October came at a pretty decent time and for me the main objective was just to have a real solid focused time not drinking not doing any drugs and for me that was the main point I needed um, especially because I don't necessarily have dr drinks and drugs at home to like to hang out and do stuff in usually it's always like the back end of a party it's always like okay I've gone to a party I want to maybe extend the party when I go home I continue or it's the day before for the party i want to get buzzed you know that kind of thing but it's not like a monday to friday thing it's just like a spur the moment thing or afterwards when i want to kind of continue on the afters so it kind of was making me a bit down the fact that i was letting myself get that way because i've never been that way in the first place i was able to pull myself out that that flipping you know horrible position i was in and so october came at a great time man. um i was probably being the most productive i've ever been especially on this channel or especially on my podcast I'm sure some of you can attest this is probably the most 
Especially October. That's probably the most pods I've ever done in my entire life, I think, in one calendar month. The most amount of clips I uploaded and, cl and clipped up and shared. The most streams I've ever done back to back. I've even did Patreon, which I never really update. And sorry about that to people on my Patreon, but I never get around to updating that because I just, you know, I'm usually recovering and don't have enough time from things that I'm doing. Well, I have enough time. Let me put that to one side. I'm usually recovering from, you know, the other night's affairs. So the fact that I was able to focus on the things I actually need to do, like you know without any distractions i went to the gym basically every single day with exceptions of one or two days here maybe the sundays here and there i couldn't go but apart from that i was riding my bike all the time going to the gym like it was incredible i don't have any other bad words to say about it and i think for myself especially the fact that i party a lot and the fact that october is usually the a good time to rave as well um it's kind of a dead month but it is a good time especially with halloween happening this year and i guess halloween this year if i'm not mistaken was the first halloween we had i think overall in western side of europe where there was no restriction so it felt like everybody was out even though i wasn't out and to be honest i felt no fomo i felt no amount of fomo zero i didn't feel one ounce one inch of fomo and i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that i did a lot of work prior because you know some people say when you do your news resolution you're not meant to do it on the day you're meant to kind of start in december but it's pretty difficult when you're your family and you're your friends you're drinking you're, you're eating and stuff it's hard to get that going but they usually say you should start any of those things kind of before the date so you should start on the first you should kind of start maybe on the 27th of december get yourself kind of going so that when the first comes around it's not such a big switch to kind of switch over and i think what's happened with me is that when halloween came because i already started my sober october, my sober october journey from like the back end of what was it september already i had I already kind of you know knocked off the, the drugs and the alcohol already on the head between the middle of september all the way until until the end of october with no flipping you know cheating or anything it made it easy when Halloween came around even though there were so many great parties this year I felt like this year was maybe the best time to go to a Halloween party in a very very long time because I feel like the UK we don't really do good Halloween parties people don't really like getting dressed up because we're quite you know we don't really like fun and games I feel like in the UK there is a lot of art and crafty sort of like base about us in terms of people but i feel like when it comes to parties and getting dressed up and going and doing the act doing the most or being extra or going the extra mile people just don't want to do it for whatever reason um there's pl plenty of ha halloween parties i've been to where there's been a big majority or there's been a, a large enough group of people in that rave who haven't got any outfits or no makeup on so it doesn't make you feel awkward if you are in there with no outfit so that's a bit of a strange one um but anyway, that aside, I uh, I felt like this year was different because I felt like even though people w weren't going super crazy with the, with the costumes and stuff, I feel like still there was a lot of events on and it kind of covered every level from like the proper bougie ones that you would see in Soho to like a warehouse party somewhere in the middle of flipping Hackney Wick. So the fact that I didn't get FOMO says a lot about where my mind was at that time. I was fully sober October, locked in. I wasn't really thinking about that. And also I knew at the end of sober October I was going to go crazy, which I obviously did. So <laughs> let's not let's not beat around that, which I actually did. But the benefits of sober October are, are that what you realise is how much time you're wasting. And that's something I have been repeating ad nauseum on here. You realise how much time you waste. And I've said it myself a lot to myself whenever I catch myself saying things like I don't have time because you always have time I, I'm a believer that there's always time to do the things that you want to do if you don't have time it's because it's not a priority and it's a bit of a brutal pill to take especially if it's a creative because you always think that oh if I get if I have my own thing if I'm freelancing I do this and I've got my time no you won't have any time you have to make the time even when you don't have it and then once you do have the extra time you'll realize that the habits that you built when you didn't have quote unquote time are going to sustain you when there's distractions all that kind of stuff come along the way and that's something i realized i realized that i have way more time in the day than i thought i did um i realized also if i just stick to doing something and doubling down i could knock them out like bang 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 um and i also realized that i don't necessarily need alcohol and drugs to have a good time or clubs in general and that's a very very big um eye opener for me because as many of you know i you know i'm i'm really into the whole techno tourism thing i love to discover new places far-flung places to go and club and party and have a good time discover new djs discover new scenes and whatnot i'm really in into that it's kind of part of my life in general i don't really you know fuck around when it comes to that sort of stuff and i wouldn't say it was a part of my identity but it's slowly and surely getting there especially when i keep repeating that sort of stuff in interviews but overall 
I feel like this has shown me that I don't need anything. And I think that's a major thing in life that I've always kind of been, I don't want to be the person that kind of has to have something in order to function. I never want to be dependent on anything. So it's good to know that if I do want to have a good time, I can just be at home. Because it wasn't like I was at home raving to streams. I, I, might, I might listen to a couple of ones in the gym, but it wasn't like replacing going out with like watching people rave in places. I just didn't care. I just kind of kept myself on social as well as a big thing. I was reading once a day. That was a big thing. Um, and I was just kind of locking myself in in terms of doing content and things I actually wanted to do in terms of watching films, all that good stuff. But apart from all the other distractions, I kind of locked them out and it was really beneficial. And again, it really realized I have way more time in a day than I actually think I do. So if Sober October ever comes back around, and um, for you, if you're still around here <laughs> to see it, <laughs> morbid, I know, but you know what I mean. But if there is ever opportunity to do something like that, then I do encourage you to do it, especially sober October, because I feel like it's more challenging than dry January. I feel like a dry January after Christmas, after all that debauchery, after all that gluttony, after all that excess, it's pretty easy to say, you know what, I don't want to, I want to turn it off for a month, right? It's pretty easy, in my opinion, I think so. Obviously, you know when i remember being at workplaces and people struggling with so with, even so with fucking dry january right but you shouldn't really be struggling with dry january dry january should be the easiest one to do but the hardest one i think the one that should be something people should try to do especially if you're an adult who kind of you know your life maybe revolves around going to the bars and meet your friends or to eat at restaurants and whatever and you want to kind of abstain from maybe drinking too much red wine or whatever your vices or smoking a cigar or weed whatever it may be I think a big one is Sober October because weirdly enough, around that time, it feels like from like August to like November, there's always somebody's flipping birthday every other week. Um, there's always some sort of gathering and event to go to. So it's quite handy if you do want to show, if you want to test yourself and really want to see if how dependent you are um, or how much of an addict you are is to kind of check, test yourself during Sober October. It's a pretty brutal one. It's not going to be easy. I do, like I said, there's a lot of things I missed out on that I didn't have a chance to get to go to. And you're going to realize it once you're there. It's not going to be super fun, especially if you decide to go to clubs and stuff. I didn't. I think the only proper club I went to was one event that, uh, you know, I kind of pre-booked before and I didn't want to let my friend down and not go. But the only thing that I went to, I think, was the print works at Dixon thing. After everything apart from that, I got knocked off the head. I didn't want to go raving sober anyway. But still, I wanted to kind of abstain completely. But if you do decide to go out, you will realize how you know um non-fun it is to go out so especially if it's your first time you're gonna not like it but it is a good test in terms of realizing what um whether or not this party lifestyle thing has a real grip on you or whether or not it's something that you just do for fun and i realized when i was you know going through sober october that as much as i enjoy going out and get messed up i think my primary reasons why i was going out was definitely to escape whatever hell hole i was going through personally when i was growing up and stuff or work whatever home life i'm pretty sure when i first was doing it but now as I kind of grew up and evolved and started to get into promoting, started to DJ myself, started to go te do the whole techno tourism thing, I think over time I developed a deep love for it, which then kind of, you know, turned into a passion or a lifestyle thing, whatever you want to call it. So it's not necessarily a thing where we're going out with the sole intention of let's rack up the lines. You know I mean, I'm going out obviously to go and see people play. I'm going out to meet people. I'm going out to socialize, to see venues and the architecture of things and soak in the atmosphere and all that kind of good stuff. So it's good to know that. If I would have found out on the other end that I was an addict, I also would have been good to know because it's nice to know where you're at so you can nowhere you can kind of go and make necessary changes but sober october for me was an absolute blast and i highly highly recommend it for those of you who haven't done it before